Hello, for today's video lecture we're going to be talking about the moment of a force about a point using scalar calculations. So moments, as a reminder, or the moment of a force is the tendency of a force to cause a rotation of a body in the form of an angular acceleration. Uh, so if we look here at our two boxes sitting on an icy surface, so box A, I'm pushing in the middle, uh, it's just going to tend to accelerate away uh, linearly, it's not going to rotate, but if I look at box B where I push on the corner, it's going to tend to not only uh, accelerate linearly, but it's also going to tend to rotate. And this is because this force is exerting a moment about the center of mass of the box. All right, so to calculate a moment, we must first choose a point that we're taking the moment about. So looking down here, I've got a lever uh, and the base of the lever is at A and the kind of handle end of the lever is at B. So I'm going to imagine pushing up uh, at point B with a force. Uh, and I want to take the moment, in this case, about the base of the lever at point A. So you can take the moment about any point, uh, but the moment you calculate will only be valid for the point that you choose. So usually there's a reason you choose a certain point uh, for your calculations. Uh, and to distinguish this, we're often going to use a subscript to indicate the point we are taking the moment about. So if I'm taking the moment about point A, uh, I might call that MA. Uh, and usually we're going to use this kind of, uh, in 2D at least, we're going to use this uh, circular arrow uh, to draw a moment uh, in this case. All right, so the moment of a force about a point is going to have both a magnitude and a direction. Uh, and the magnitude of the moment will be the magnitude of the force times the perpendicular distance between the force and the point. So moment is equal to force times distance. And our distance, uh, in this case, is the distance between point A and between our force. We'll come back to this per perpendicular distance here in a second. All right, so to determine the direction, uh, we're going to look at the direction of rotation the force would cause. Uh, so in this case, imagine holding down your body at the point you're looking at. So this is we're taking the moment at point A, so I'm going to imagine kind of holding down point A, uh, and then I exert that force. So think about what way the body is going to rotate about that point you're holding it down at. Uh, and so in this case, if I'm holding it down at A and I push up uh, over at point B, uh, this whole thing is going to tend to rotate counterclockwise. So a counterclockwise rotation is considered a positive rotation. If the force you're exerting is going to tend to cause a clockwise rotation, that is considered a negative uh, rotation. So direction in this case is just positive or negative uh, because everything's going to be a counterclockwise or a clockwise rotation uh, in my two dimensions. All right, let's go back to that perpendicular distance. So the distance in the moment calculation is always going to be the shortest distance between the line of action of the force and the point we're taking the moment about. Uh, so before, that was just kind of a, a straight horizontal distance. Um, but it's not always going to be that simple. So this is always going to be a line that is perpendicular to the line of the action of the force uh, because that's the shortest distance is going to be perpendicular to that particular line. Uh, so if I imagine my lever and it's rotated up about 45 degrees, uh, here uh, the shortest distance is no longer A out to the handle. Uh, if I draw in that whole line of action, the uh, shortest distance now is going from point A out to the bottom right here. And so this line of action of the force and my distance uh, is going to be a right angle. So something like this, it's going to be a little more difficult. So uh, here I've got uh, I'm taking the moment, moment about the center point. I've got my line of action of the force drawn in. Uh, and so it's not this distance here to here. It's not the base of the force vector to here. Uh, I need to figure out where I would go out perpendicular from that line of action to get the minimum distance right here. So you always want to find the minimum distance or the perpendicular distance for your m equals force times distance calculation. All right, so now let's go and talk about 3D. So in three dimensions, we will likely need to, mo we'll need to modify our calculations slightly to make them work. 
Uh, so the magnitude of the moment is still going to be the magnitude of the force times the perpendicular distance. That part does not change. Uh, and But finding this distance can be quite difficult. So um, in 3D, if you've got uh, just a single point and a line going through space, uh, you can do a lot of geometry uh, if it's not a kind of obvious distance there. Uh, so do be quite careful with that. Uh, and the direction of the moment is now going to have to be represented as a moment vector, uh, or through the moment vector, really. Uh, so the moment vector is going to lie along the axis that we will be rotating the body about, uh, and that is going to be the uh, axis of rotation, and we're going to use something called the right-hand rule to indicate the direction on that axis. All right, so to visualize the direction of the moment vector, we use this right-hand rule. So this is a visual of this whole thing. So to use this, you're going to take your right hand, so sorry lefties, uh, but take your right hand, curl your fingers in the direction of the rotation. So think about how this thing would rotate, curl your fingers in that direction. You're going to stick your thumb straight out and your thumb should line up with the axis that is being is rotating about and your thumb indicates the direction of the moment factor. So if we look at a problem like this. So here I've got a problem. I've got kind of a flat bar in the x, y, and z planes. Uh, I've got my force vector. I've got the point I'm looking at. And if I imagine kind of curling my fingers in the direction this whole thing would rotate, uh, that curling of my fingers and I stick my thumb out, my thumb is now sticking in the direction of the moment vector. Uh, so this is why if we look at 2D, uh, if we did something like this in 2D, uh, if I have a counterclockwise rotation, uh, that's going to tend to actually rotate, or that's going to have my thumb sticking out of the page in the positive z direction. Uh, if I had a clockwise rotation in two dimensions, my thumb would be sticking into the board kind of in the negative z direction if I had a z direction. So that's why we have this um, whole system where counterclockwise is positive and clockwise is negative in these systems. Uh, so with the complex uh, 3D moment calculations, it's theoretically possible to calculate any moment using this method. Uh, the geometry on that perpendicular distance uh, and finding the direction of the moment vector if it's not just kind of along the x, y, or z axis can become really difficult. So for this reason, we actually uh, usually resort to the vector methods of calculation uh, when problems become too complex. So these scalar calculations work really nice in 2D. Uh, they work for some 3D problems, uh, but the vector methods uh, that we're going to talk about in a future section are going to be a lot easier uh, for really complex 3D problems. Just a, a heads up for all of this. So that's all we have for today's video lecture. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again.